Hey guys, I just wanted to talk about this express van that we're going to look at in this video. Um, what do I always say when we have vehicles that come in and we don't know where to start, right? You got to pick something. This truck had multiple problems. We were talking about a no crank situation when we first looked at it, which turned out to be a pass key sensor that was faulty, a pass lock sensor, I'm sorry, that was faulty. Um, we replaced that, got the thing to crank, expecting it to run really badly. Well, I did get it to run, I couldn't get it to run on video, but I did get it to run before and it ran absolutely horrible. Now uh, scanning it for codes did me no good, uh, so of course we start with the basic stuff, right? Not intrusive as much as possible. Check spark on all the cylinders, I had good spark. Move on from there uh, to fuel, check fuel pressure. Our fuel pressure was low on this vehicle. It was not extremely low where we had no fuel pressure 20 pounds or something like that but it was at 50 and this truck should be running somewhere between 60 and 66 pounds of pressure uh, this is low enough to cause a problem now where I knew that we had something else going on here is that if I substituted fuel in this vehicle it would run and uh, I could get it to sustain idle on its own but it would run really really bad to the point where I knew it was more than just low fuel pressure. This had a this had another issue. So before putting a pump in it, I wanted to see if I could locate what the other problem was with this truck. Um, I've seen these things run at 50 pounds of pressure and idle smooth. Uh, this was a different case, okay, as you're going to see in the video. So that's why we moved on. We stayed in the fuel system, though. We had good spark. We stayed in the fuel system, and we went to injectors. Uh, and on these trucks, a lot of guys, you know, aren't sure from at least a lot of guys that I speak to aren't sure what to do with them. Uh, you could scope them. You can, uh, you know, actually I should have put a scope on here now that I think about it because it probably would have been pretty cool to see what was actually happening. And I wasn't really thinking about it at the time because I was kind of in a rush to get this thing checked out and, uh, and move on to the next job that I had waiting for me in the bay. So... I should have, uh, from my own knowledge, should have actually put in a scope on here just to see what the difference in the patterns were on these injectors and then scope the new ones, you know. In any case, I didn't do it, so my fault. Uh, next time. Next time I will. Uh, but like I, like I always say, you got to pick a direction. And with this thing, uh, there was kind of a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things. A lot of hands were in this truck before I got into it and um, I think it was tuned up actually before I worked on it. There, were, there was a lot of stuff going on with this truck. So you have to pick something and verify that, you know, that test passed or that test failed and then know the direction to go in. Like I had mentioned in the video, I think I mentioned in the video somewhere that I ran a back pressure test on it. If I didn't, I did run a back pressure test on this truck just because it was easy and I was right there and it's a possibility that we had a clogged converter on this truck the way it was acting. So. I ran a back pressure test, passed, I didn't have to think about that anymore, I knew that that was good, I moved on. So this is what I'm talking about, you have to verify things and uh, it really helps, you know, not to second guess yourself. Uh, so this is basically, this video basically consists of uh, how to check, uh, how to do an in injector balance test on these vehicles, on these GM, or a lot of vehicles for that matter, these GMs you can do through the scanner, some of them you can and you need a... Um, supplementary tool to pulse the injectors which plug right onto them. Uh, I'm glad that on this truck you don't have to worry about that because these injectors are underneath the intake and you would have to pin, you would have to uh, uh, get into each pin, each set of pins for the injectors to uh, to pulse them if it wasn't available through the scan tools by directional control, but we don't have to worry about that. So check the video out, enjoy, and uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks. Hey guys, I uh, got a uh, good one here, I think. It's a uh, 99 GM uh, Express van, uh, 1500 with a 5 liter, and it's a Vortec engine. I don't know if you can see too good here. Um, this truck was purchased by some buddies of mine. They have a uh, trucking company and they want to use it for transportation and uh, stuff like that for equipment. and they bought it not running, or actually, I'm sorry, they bought it running 
running badly. Um, then one day the truck wouldn't start anymore and they had it sitting here for a few months I'm assuming from what they're telling me and it seems like uh, well it doesn't seem like it is that the the thing was in theft uh, we had a bad um, pass lock sensor on this thing so when uh, when we diagnosed that he was telling me as I was working on it that you know he knows that the truck runs or did run at one point but it ran really poorly so uh, we were expecting a problem with it after we got it after we got it fixed or actually after we got it to run this is the old pass lock unit and uh, while we were in there we changed the broken ignition lock cylinder as well set of new keys and stuff so this is junk but that's all set up and uh, working now as I said once we got this thing running or attempting to run I should say it's very hard to get this thing to start sorry about that guys my phone's going off um, you see the crank. I can get it to start it's very very difficult I messed around with it a little bit the other day and um, I was what I wanted to do is I wanted to go in here I I feel for the way this thing, I wish I could get this thing to start for a few seconds at least, just so you could hear it. Um, let's see. Let's see. I can get it to go. Very, very hard to start this thing. Anyway, uh, it really doesn't matter. I did look at it already, and what I'm getting at here is I just want to show you guys what we got, what we found. Um, I was I was checking obviously all the basics here. The thing the thing runs like on a, on maybe three cylinders. It was misfiring. Uh, it was doing everything you could think of. It was you know showing poor running conditions. Now I know you you know you're probably thinking it's loading up the Alright, so like I said guys, I was checking this thing the other day and um, when it was running, I noticed my fuel trims on this thing were, one one bank was like minus 35%, the other bank was, uh, the other bank actually was well, about maybe 5% or so, it wasn't, it was fine, the other bank was okay. Uh, this thing was running so bad, I mean, you couldn't accelerate, it would just load up and uh, the first thing I thought on here was that it was a leaking fuel pressure regulator to be quite typical on it. I did see misfires while I was... I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to get it to start anymore at this point because I know how much trouble I had to get it to run and once I got it to run it was it was just really bad. So I just want to run through the tests that I did here and uh, kind of give you guys some insight into how to diagnose something like this. These, these trucks are relatively simple systems. They the injectors are under the intake manifold. Okay, they're all one, basically one piece on a on a unit, and the regulator is part of that as well. Um, same as the V6s, the 4.3s are the same way, and they were notorious for leaking. So the first thing you do with these is you get yourself a fuel pressure gauge, hook up your gauge, which I have here, onto the Schrader valve, and turn the key on, let the pump run. Now, what you should see is, you should see, if you have a leak, is you should see this pressure drop. Okay, as you can see here, it's holding at 50 PSI. So, that was kind of a surprise to me. I was expecting that, that gauge to drop like a rock. And when that didn't happen, I was like, oh boy, right? Figured we got another issue going on here. Um, and I was almost going to get away from injectors on here or, or a fuel pressure regulator problem. But I want to step further, and going a step further is what we needed to do here. And I'm going to show you why. I've got my scan tool hooked up here, and I'm going to just go into this vehicle. Actually, I'm going to set this up so you can see it over here on the, on the scan tool
Okay, so what we're doing is we're going into our PCM and we're going to go into fuel injector balance. It's going to tell you make sure all the lines are connected, gauge is connected, and remember this, each injector can only be flowed, pulsed once ignition, That's uh, so it doesn't flood the cylinders out, okay, and cause a hydro lock condition, damage an engine, it's a safety. So now you have your options here, injector one, two, three, four. Now what you're going to do is hold on a second because i got a customer. All right, guys, so I had to stop. I forgot where I was at. I had a customer. Uh, okay, so here's where we're at. What we're going to do is an injector balance test on this thing. Basically, what we're checking here is the flow of each injector Okay, across the board. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to turn the camera on the gauge and I'm going to be pressing the buttons here one at a time for each injector okay and we're going to watch the drop on our gauge so let me see how I could set this up so we can all see nice and clear hopefully you can see the gauge in the shot here uh, I'm going to cycle the key off and on and we are at roughly 50, 50 PSI. So now we're going to look at the number one injector. And it dropped to about 48 and a half PSI. I'm not sure if it's done yet. Oh, there it goes. All right, so we dropped to 41 PSI. cycle the key we're at 50 I'm gonna go to injector number two all right number three that's a big difference Number four. Number four. Come on, number four. You can do it. Mm. Okay, number four has not moved yet. We'll just go to number five. And you can see number five dropped to about 42 PSI. Uh, 44 PSI, roughly something like that. We're going to go to injector number six. Injector number six, anybody home? Doesn't seem that way. Let's try number seven. I'm not going to cycle the key again. Number seven is doing absolutely nothing as well. Number eight is doing nothing as well. Okay, so we have injectors here that are not working, and I dropped the camera. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so there, there's our, there's our issue here. Um, we have no, we have no flow here on some of these injectors, and some of them are flowing too much sometimes. I did this test earlier. Can I get this thing to run? There's just not enough flow for this thing to run. Alright, um... I'm gonna try injector number seven again. Yeah, see there's no... the commanded state is on. There's nothing happening here. Six. There's five. Five works. Four. I don't even care about a differential pressure here. It's just not, they're not working. There's number four is not doing anything. Number three. And number three is working, sort of. I can't even tell here if, you know, if we have like an injector that's clogged. 
I mean, I'm sorry, an injector that's flowing too much, that's open, or an injector that's just, you know, wide open or whatever like that. We don't know because we have nothing to really compare it to. They're not working. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, uh, we're going to take this intake off, and we're going to replace the injection assembly underneath this intake. And I'm going to try to film this while I do it, I guess. And um, we'll do a comparison after it's done, see how that works out. All right.